Good to see everybody this morning. If you will, turn your Bibles to Habakkuk chapter 2. When we uh, looked at this last week, we saw the prophet of God, Habakkuk, and uh, he said what he saw was a burden, and the burden was all the people doing evil. It didn't seem like there was any punishment for the evil that he saw in the world that was going on. And so he, he carried to God in prayer and asked God, why, why? Why aren't you doing anything about it? God answered him. Down in verse 5 of chapter 1 through 11, he, he gave the answer. He says, well, I, I have been working. I've got a plan. Uh, the Chaldeans, which we would know as Babylon, is going to come in and uh, punish the wicked and punish the land and, and punish your nation. And now... Habakkuk has a, a bigger problem. So God answered and said, oh, I've got something coming. And I'm going to tell you, and you're not even going to believe it, though, though that I tell you. And uh, then Habakkuk has another question for God. Well, God, how can you use wick, a wicked people, more wicked than us, to punish us? Why would you use them? And then that what we've really want to know most time especially like when we see what's going on in in our country now we said why ain't you doing anything about this god well what if god's answers was to us the same as it is to Habakkuk? that oh i've got a plan that's what we insinuated last week that you know maybe maybe it is going to be china that comes in and god's going to use them to chastise us well that don't seem fair we're your people god why would you use some foreign nation that believes in buddha or confucianism you know why 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 would you do that because my people won't humble themselves they don't need me i i've 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 fed them i've clothed them i've protected them you know we think it's us that we have such a great land you know why this land is so great god blessed it that's the reason it's great. It's not because we Americans live here. Put that out of your mind. It's not that we're righteous and, and good. We're evil and we're wicked. And uh, so that might be coming our way. But he, he, so he has this question. How, how can you do that? And There's many ways to try to look at this. God in his own word tells us that our ways is not God's ways. And we look at this and say, well, this is not good. What's going to happen to the nation of Israel? Chaldeans, the Babylonians, they're, they're not only evil, they're fierce, ferocious. Deadly. But Romans 8, 28 tells us, for we know that all things work to good to those that love the Lord who's called according to his purpose. All right, well, how can this be, Skip, since you're so smart up there? Well, do you know where uh, what happens, what he's talking about, what's fixing to happen right here in this part? Just this part, back in that time. That's when Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, came in and took over Israel. Captured Daniel and the Hebrew children. And for 70 years, they were in captivity. Well, that don't seem like that's such a good thing. Well, God's purpose was served. Who got saved 
during that time. A lot of the Chaldeans and Babylonians, because of King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, he believed God. I mean, he, he had some trials on his own, but he ended up being a believer, and he even declared a law that everybody should believe in the Most High God, the living God of Daniel. And Daniel gave us good examples of what we will experience in our time before the Lord calls us away. Now, see, we've never really experienced uh, religious persecution in this country. All right? We, our forefathers fled England to come here so they could worship God. And we did. And most of the time, up until recently, uh, you actually found favor with people if you believe. That's why we have so many pseudo Christians or fake Christians, if you want to call them, because it, it, it does their business good. You know what I mean? Uh, if you don't believe me, look at some of the people that seek out some of the bigger churches. Why they seek them out? Contacts. But they don't know Jesus. And their day's coming. But the, that's off his point. The point is, we're going to suffer persecution for our faith. It's starting. All right? So we're, we're going to have to go underground, right? And be quiet about it. No. Now's the time to put your money where your mouth is. Prove that you believe. Prove you have faith. Trust God. I might die. I listened to what Brother Mark sent, uh, an interview with a couple of pastors, and they're, they're talking about they're, they're worried that being a Christian, they're going to try to make it as a capital offense, meaning it could cost you your life. And one of them said that he was worried that it could happen this year. Maybe. Was, what do you mean, Skip? Should I be scared? No, you need to dig in close to God. You need to be real close to him. He is the author and finisher of our faith. All right? Just be real clear. That's the word they always like to say, and we'll circle back around to the lesson later. No. Uh, let's be clear. You're terminal. With or without a virus, with or without cancer, you will die. I promise you. Well, no, I'm, I'm thinking the rapture's going to happen. I'm going to be raptured. Brother, sister, that's death. Even the rapture is death. The only thing is there's not going to be a funeral for you. Okay? All right? You have to put off this corruptible. All right? This mortal. You have to put it off. The blood that we carry is the blood of Adam. This blood is sin blood. It cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. You will have a glorified body, soul, and spirit. It will all be reunited. And if you're raptured, you're going to be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, instantaneous. You'll, your body will die, and it will become glorified if you're saved. Without salvation of Jesus Christ, you're condemned already. You've already been weighed and, and found wanting. Uh, you don't measure up to get into the kingdom of God. None of us do. I know I'm going because I know who I believe. And I trust that what he did is sufficient to pay my debt. Nothing I can ever do will pay my debt. I will always be a slave. I will always be a debtor. But I'm no longer a slave to the devil and his kingdom. I am a slave to my father in heaven and my savior, Jesus Christ. That's whom I serve. And we have to do like Paul and beat our body into subjection and remind ourselves constantly. So that means there's going to be times. And just for a moment, try to imagine with me that if the government knew that we was meeting like this, 
and they decided to come in here, that it would be a capital offense where they could kill you, execute you on the spot. And they come up here and they say, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? And have you placed your confidence in him? Knowing that when you said yes, that they were going to take your head and kill you. Would you go and say yes? Or would you say, Lord, forgive me? No. I'm going to tell you, most people are going to save their necks. That's why it, it warns us about so many different things to watch and be careful of. Now, I will say, because people want to know, is the vaccine the mark of the beast? Not yet. Is it coming? Yes. And it might be through the vaccine, but it's not going to be in the form that they're doing. I still have issues with it. I still probably will not take the the thing that might change if I can't go to India without it. But we'll we'll cross that bridge and pray about it, and that'll be between God and and the government what they say has to do, and then. I'm going to team up with God, whatever he says. But uh, there might be workarounds. But what Satan is doing is he's prepping us, okay, to be accommodating to the things. That, and let me ask you, in all honesty, we we are so close to that already that we don't even realize it. Uh just to give you another idea, have you ever tried to get a good job without a Social Security card? Have you? You're not going to do it. You might find a cash-only job or, or work like some of the uh, uh, illegal aliens in, in fields and stuff for cash and, and food, but you're not going to get a $75,000 a year, $100,000 a year job or career without a Social Security card. Because they want to track you and, and your money, and, and they want to make sure you pay your, your share of your taxes. and uh, So it's almost where they can get you now where you can't buy and sell without their permission. When they do away with the cash, and they're working on that, isn't there a coin shortage? No. But there's a coin shortage. They're prepping everybody, and then they're already wanting to quit print $100 bills and $50 bills. Why? Hey, they're going to sell this thing really good. If we do it all digital money, you can't buy and sell dope no more. You can't do anything illegal. Everything will be tracked, and everything is, and, well, in a way, that sounds good, don't it? Then they're going to say, look, when the Antichrist uh, finally takes the scene, he's going to demand you take the mark. And here's the thing. I want you to be real careful. People don't think this is true. He's not going to come in and say, look, I'm the Antichrist, and you're going to take this number. Do you hear me? Or I'm going to kill you. No. No, no, no. He ain't going to do that. It's going to be deceitful. People are going to say, you know what? I don't know if I should or shouldn't. I mean, could this be the mark? This ain't going to be the mark. I can't feed my baby. I can't go to Kroger. I can't go to Walmart if I don't. But this ain't it because, you know, this is th this ain't the time yet. This ain't happening yet. And. They take the mark. According to Revelation, if you take the mark, you're eternally condemned. There's no way to get forgiveness after the mark and be saved. You're, you're doomed. You're his. You're marked out for him. Why are you telling us this? Because we're getting... <laughs> Donnie says this at work on it gets real sometimes. It's getting real. It's getting real because we can see 
the their agenda and how they're pushing uh, for this. Now, Habakkuk has got the word from God. Let's read in verse 1 of chapter 2 down through 4. This is Habakkuk writing. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. We'll talk about that word reproved in a minute. It's not what we normally think that is, but anyway. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So, Habakkuk says, I'm going to stand upon my watch. They had towers. Uh, the watchmen in the day would sit on the towers and, and watch day and night and uh, to sound the alarm if they saw an enemy approaching. Well, the man of God also isolates himself so he can meditate and be with God and and listen to God's response, uh, separated from the world, so to speak, not conforming to the world. And we read about that in Sunday School 12, 2 of uh, Romans, where uh, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind to prove that is what is acceptable uh, uh, and perfect will of God. Paraphrase the last little bit, but. God wants us to consider him. And your preacher, not because it's me, but any preacher that's standing here is the watchman. He's got to give an account to God. He answers for what he does or does not say. And if he's asleep at the wheel, so to speak, and the wolf comes to devour, God is not going to be pleased with the watchman because he was not taking care of the sheep. He's supposed to sound the alarm when he sees the wolf coming. He says, I'm going to stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will send to me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Uh, when he answers me, when I am understanding what God has. How many of us want to know what God has going on right now? I mean, I, I want to know the kind of the time frame, right? I mean, I see, I've heard tales since I was a kid about these days that it seems that we're living in. I listened to John Hagee preach the other day and it, and it, it thrilled, thrilled me actually because he, he, he unburdened me a little bit. To be quite honest, I've been feeling guilty about these lessons that I feel like God's been showing me that I'm going to have to tell you, you know, Uh, because we have young people in our congregation, newlyweds, people that's fixing to be married, people that's having babies, and and there's babies and young children, and I'm saying, the sky's falling, it's the end of the world. And Hagee says, don't be ashamed of the lesson. Don't be ashamed of the time. He says these young people and these children were born in for such a time as this and they can handle it and they have to have the truth too. So you have to declare the truth. It's not about feelings. It's not about scaring people. It's not about trying to motivate somebody to do something. My job 
is without, with as little as emotion as possible to tell you what God's word is and what's going on so you can expect it. Satan is fighting all that he can because he knows his day's coming. And he will lie to you. He's the father of lies. He will steal from you. He will kill. He will destroy. If you give him an, a little bit, he'll sling the door wide open on you if you're not careful. He will, he will destroy you. And if you'll notice, he's got our government telling us to separate ourselves. Stay apart. Social distance. There's no touching. Don't, don't be hugging each other. Don't be sitting in the congregation like we are here, breathing. None of y'all got masks on. What's wrong with y'all? Why ain't you got a mask on? My faith is in God. There's been germs that kill people all the time. Look, if you really are afraid of the coronavirus, then you need to be like on those movies you see where they're in them space suits. That's the only way you can keep that thing from getting in you if it's God's will for you to get it. But I'm going to tell you, look up the drug, trust God, and know that there's a drug. If you get it, it's called ivermectin. And you can find doctors that will prescribe it. My doctor gave it to me. I told him to go look at that video and get the protocols off of it and see what he thought. He says, well, we've already had it in my family. He's from another country, so he's familiar with it. And so he prescribed it to me. And I got it sitting on my kitchen counter. So if you get sick, I can't say that. You just let me know. I'll tell you who the doctor is. <clears throat> But I'll also tell you in Hebrews, I believe it's 927, it says it is appointed. What's appointed mean? Isn't that an appointment? Okay, let me ask you a question. See, but people argue with me about this all the time because they don't like it. See, we want to be in control. We, we just want to be in control of something, you know, except for ourselves. Uh, did you have a say-so? When you was born? Did you get to pick your skin color? Your gender? You know what? They still can't pick their gender. God chooses that at birth. You know, they, <laughs> and there's two of them. Male and female. God created he them. Well, you're just closed minded. It made perfect sense to me as a kid to, to be able to to look at a little puppy and tell if it was a boy or girl. You know what I mean? Cats, not so much, but dogs, pretty easy. People ain't much different. You know? There's a male and there's a female. We can't handle the truth. And I will watch to see what he will say to me and what I shall answer when I am told and understand. And the Lord answered me. Now, I've heard this preached different ways and I've preached this wrong before. Uh, this vision is not, he's talking to Habakkuk here. And he says, write this down and make it plain upon the, the paper, so to speak, tablets. For what? That he may run that readeth it. Paul says, I've, I've, ran, I've ran my race. When we get saved, when we understand God's word, we have a race to run. We have a journey to make. He loves us so much, it's appointed once for man to die. When your job is finished, he brings you home. He loves you enough. He's not going to leave you down here. And why would he leave you here when your work is finished? It'd be time to come home for supper, wouldn't it? It'd be time to be there. Death and that's, it is not your punishment. Death is your reward. But see, we don't, we can't, we... <laughs> We make judgments 
and we don't understand. That's why we should be like Christ and say, Lord, this is what I want, but nevertheless, your will be done. Because we really don't understand what's going on sometimes. But write the vision down, so he that, that he may run that readeth it. Make it short and simple so he can get it and take off with it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. It's appointed. What we're talking about will not be one second quicker than it should be or one second longer than it should be. It's going to be the perfect timing of God. If you don't understand that, just kind of look at Christ when they tried to kept do it for him to do all. And he says, my time is not yet. My time is not yet. But then when it was time, he says, go get me the donkey. You know, and he rode in and there was that triumphal entry. Everybody was praising Hosanna. Hallelujah. Less than a week later, crucify him. Crucify him. Now look, we're coming to a time that you can't straddle the fence no more. You're going to have to decide which side you're on. Look, we, we, we've cautioned young people when it comes to sex and, and drugs. You make your decision before it's presented to you. You have to know, I'm not going to do drugs. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to have sex before I get married. And I'm going to do what God tells me to do. You make that decision. And when somebody says, oh, come on, you can have one drink. You'll say, no, I don't drink. Why? I'm in training. Training for what? Heaven. I won't have to get drunk in heaven. I'm going to be happy in heaven. You know what? You can have happiness here if you know where you're going. But you got to make the decision. So you got to decide if you're going to serve God or not. You need to, to find you a tower and get along with God for a minute and decide if you're going to serve. Because I'm telling you, things are changing in this country. And your Christianity is going to cost you. And if you don't decide to dig in and fight, you'll give it up. You'll take the mark. You'll join the team that's going to send you to hell. You can't be wishy-washy. You're going to have to decide. Because it's an appointed time and it's going to happen. But at the end, it shall speak and, and not lie. You know, everybody keeps saying, well, they've been saying Jesus is going to be coming back ever since he left the first time. Mm-hmm. But things hadn't lined up like they've been lining up. Everything's been working. To the, he said it'd be a while. It's going to be Terry. It was a while before uh, Babylon came in and took the children of Israel captive. All right. But this is one of those that it splits both ways. It's talking about a time then and another time in the future that I think he's talking about the time that we're living in. He was also talking about the time that the children of Israel was fixing to be invaded by the Chaldeans, Babylon, and we know how they destroyed Israel and took them captive. They were so ferocious, they would, would kill uh, the men and uh, rape the women so they'd be damaged goods or kill them. Same way with the children, and they would take the brightest of the children and take them back to them and train them in their ways. Daniel is a good example. And God kept raising him up every time. Why? Well, Daniel did what God told him to do. What are you saying? I'm telling you that what we see, instead of us wringing our hands, keeps drawing close to God, serve him. It will do good for you to serve him. Well, what if it's like you say, and, and I say, yes, I serve God the most high, and they kill me. Hallelujah. You're not here suffering no more. You're not fighting that no more. You're in God's presence. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Just underline that. All that you know about what God has said that's going to happen, 
it will surely come. Because if it does not, if he if he misleads or lies about one thing, then all of it's a misled lie. So it will come and it will not tarry. Jesus Christ himself said, I come quickly. When it happens, it's quick. And I don't know about y'all, but what I've seen in just the last 13 months has been quick. I cannot believe how far this country has reversed and changed gears and looked down the other end of, of what is right. And, and I just, I still don't believe that half this nation believes what all the media tells us they believe. I think it's like, uh, let me put some hate speech in there. Uh, it's just like the LGBT, isn't that right? Is that the right words, letters? What? Say it. LGBTQ2. What? Did I say something wrong? Oh, uh, anyway. Look, they are not a majority. All right? They are less than 5% of the population. They want to act like they're 50, 60%. They are not. Now, there's a lot of people that sympathize with them and, and work with them, and there's a lot of kids that say they are because it's the hip thing to do right now. But it's not. So I don't think this other stuff that they're talking about is true. But because the media keeps saying it and they keep pushing and pushing and pushing, you know, the coronavirus, does it kill people? Yes. Is it as bad as they say? I don't think so. What do you mean? Well, you take the death numbers, and, and if, you, <laughs> if you do it on Facebook or Google, they'll fact check you and tell you that you're, you're, you're not looking at the numbers right. And matter of fact, they're taking the numbers down. You can't even get the real numbers no more. Just ask, how many people died in America in 2016, 17, 18, and 19, and 20, and used to? I do that before they started messing with everything, and it would just give you numbers. Here's this number, car accidents, cancer, all of it. I added up and separated if you wanted it, but added up. Here's what they died here. This many people this year, this, this. and now it's like, well, you know, uh, we, and, and they won't give you numbers. They'll give you every kind of number. But 33% of the people died of this. I didn't ask that. How many people died? But they give you percentage and stuff, see if they can hide it. It's like I was listening about them voting machines that they keep hiding about that. Why in the world would you even have a voting machine that has algorithms in it so you can add 3% or take 3% away or take 3% from that one and put 3% on that? Why would you have a machine like that in this country? I know why we did them or supported them in this country for other countries. That's not right either, but I know why they did it. But you shouldn't be having them here. Well, here's what you can do about truth. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. This green deal that the World Economic Forum is so worried about and the New World Order and, and we're going to be green and clean here and drive all electric cars in 2035. Uh, John MacArthur Jr. Uh, listened to a sermon and uh, he, he, he said, trample the grass, cut the trees down, drive your big trucks, shoot your guns, drill for oil. And then I can't remember if it was first Peter, or second Peter, he says, but the earth will pass away with a fervent heat, the earth and the elements therein. That's God's word. Oh yeah, it's going to be a, a warm globe one day. Look back down here. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. That day's coming, friends. I don't think we're going to be here for that part. Okay? But we'll come back after that because he says he will make a new heaven and a new earth. All right, let's look at this verse 4. And this is the key verse of this whole book. All three chapters, it's a real small book. 
But uh, this is the key one. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Speaking of himself. He knew he wasn't upright, even though he's lifted up on that tower, waiting to hear from the word of God. He knew that he's not upright. But the just shall live by his faith. This was before Jesus' time, all right? But what was accounted as righteousness for Abraham? He couldn't believe in Jesus Christ, could he? Because Jesus Christ wouldn't introduce the Savior. But he believed Jehovah God. His faith was accounted as righteousness. We, we look at Noah. His faith was accounted as righteousness. Apart from faith, there's no pleasing God. So that's why Paul says to the jailer, when they said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? He says, believe in Jesus and you and your household will be saved. Now that believe produces, believe and faith are two different things. You can believe a lot of stuff, but if you have faith, it's belief mixed with an action. You might say, well, that's work, Skip. It's not required, but you, you, you can't help it. When you know the truth it, 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 and, and believe, it produces a faith that produces an action in your life. If it doesn't produce an action, a change in your life, I don't think you've got what you're needing. If it didn't change your life here, it didn't change your eternal destination because it will change your life. Does that mean you're going to be perfect? No. Right there, he pretty much says, it's, he's not upright. Look, I look at you and I'm telling you, I know there's things I still do in my life that's not upright. Uh, I try not to do them. And I constantly feel like I am doing better and better and better. But there's still issues. There's times that I say things and think things that I should not do as a Christian. And uh, I will answer for that one day. But I am redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And you can be redeemed. And there's no need to walk through this, this world and be afraid just because we know what time we're living in. But see, the truth of the matter is we should have been living like this all along. Because you never know if today is the day that your appointment is. You know, you can be doing good right this second and be in the presence of God in the next second. It's just a, and I know this sounds trite, but it's just a heartbeat away. When you start dealing sometimes with people's health and, and, and seeing certain things, just like Isaac, our youngest son, has type 1 diabetes. Our, our bodies, the word says, are fearfully and wonderfully made. And they are, they are balanced. If you I don't, a machine might not be the proper word. They are, are a balanced work of art that's unbelievable. And just a little bit too much insulin can cause problems and not enough can cause problems. You know, everybody knows you have to have water to live, right? We're mostly water. <laughs> uh, you know, if you drink too much water, you'll die. Water now. You got to have water. What are you saying, Skip? I'm saying our bodies are here to serve God. And, and they, they will pass because of sin. The wages of sin is death. Brother John, if you'll come up here and get ready to lead us in a song of invitation. It, if you don't know... Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Would you make him your Lord and Savior? If he is and you find yourself, you really hadn't been living as good as you should and you've been doing things that you ought not, why don't you ask God for forgiveness and repent? How soon Will it be?
before Christ returns. Soon. How soon will it be before we see Jesus face to face? I don't know. Some of us might see him before others. It really is time to quit playing games and to be serious about your faith because you need to make the decision like we talk about the young people uh, about making life choices before it's presented to themselves. You need to decide if you're going to fight for your faith or stay silent, because if you're going to stay silent, you you probably don't have faith. You really do need to decide who you serve. As far as me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And if you're not going to serve Jesus Christ, I'm going to, I'm going to please. If if you if you're not sure. You probably don't need to come here much. Because if you come here and you hear the truth as it's presented, you're you're going to be held even more accountable for not serving. I'm 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 as honest as I can be right now. This is not a, a game that makes you feel good on Sundays or not so good right now, but this determines eternal destinies and whether you're going to be found at peace through eternity, uh, past peace, man, I'm telling you, with what the Word says and He's promised us, uh, we can't even put into earthly words and, and, and things. Paul says, what I saw, it's unlawful for me to speak of here. Won't it be wonderful there? Or be separated. And, and I hear people in stupidity say, well, you know, if, if I go to hell, I'll be so busy with all my friends partying and doing all this stuff. No, you won't. You won't know one person there. He's going to keep you separated and isolated in dark and fear, weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the flames are going to be tormenting you. The man that we read about, he says, just, just let Lazarus dip his finger in the water and put a drop on my tongue. I'm in torment. And Abraham looked at him and said, there's a great gulf fixed between you and me. And we can't come there and you can't come here. He said, well, go tell my brothers. So they won't. They said, he said, they won't listen. Even if a prophet came and told him, he wouldn't listen. The only thing is that wasn't a parable. That man is still in torment, wanting a drop of water, and that was written over 2,000 years ago. It's not a game. It is time to make your faith real. Brother Johnny. Song of Invitation this morning be page 195. Softly and tenderly, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Sealed the portals, He's waiting and watching, watching for you and for Come home, come home, you are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is pleading, pleading, oh sinner, come Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for 